Welcome to Tuesday, March 9th, 2021 regular selectmen's meeting. We have all of our selectmen are present today, along with the town manager, the town clerk, and special guest appearing, Rick Vandenberg tonight. Is, uh, is, uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everybody. Is um, our first order is the approval of the February 9th minutes. We tabled these from last week. I'll move that we accept the minutes as presented. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is <clears throat> Ken? Yes. Ed? Yes. Noah? Yes. And Mark, you were there for part of the meeting, so. Yes. Is uh, Mark Snotto answering, but he said yes, and I am a yes also. <clears throat> we also have. Hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, we'll have um, <clears throat> minutes from uh, Tuesday, February twenty third meeting, our last meeting. Is Mark was absent that day, so do I have? Both that we accept the minutes as presented. I'll second, second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Without further discussion, I'll go through the roll. Is Ken? Yes. Ed. Yes. Noah? Yes. And myself is a yes. And, uh, and Mark was absent from suing you. <laughs> so. All right. We have our first public comment. Nobody's called or sent emails. We have no public hearing tonight. As our reports of committees is we have no BCTV or Envision Berwick committees. Is I want I want to just mention this one item here. We have the reports of the committees on here, but the only two that are ever listed are the BCTV and the Envision Berwick committee, and you know I don't know why that is. <laughs> is. Well, you 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 have some new members coming on to the Recreation uh, Committee, so I think uh, with Angela here, we'll, we can get some information out to the public. Because uh, there's quite a bit of activity going on in organizing and, uh, and events coming up for March and April. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk to them about that. So, um, Thank you. Um, we have no department reports, but we do have a presentation. We have yeah. Rick Vandenberg, a draft analysis of the Brownfield Cleanup Alternatives. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Great. How are you? Bad. Did Take you say away. bad? Not too bad. Oh, not too bad. Good. Well, it's good to hear then. <laughs> so um, if it's it all away. right, I'd like to share my screen so I, I have a little presentation prepared. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, I'll start the presentation then. Assuming that it wants to start. Here we go. So uh, I'm here this evening to talk about the next steps um, at the former prime tanning, which now we affectionately call, refer to as the edge. And the reason I'm here is that um, Great Falls Construction and their and the ownership property, JCS 16, has applied for and is in the process of receiving uh, additional Brownfields funding to pay for some more next step work. Um, at the site, and um, and that's what and that's what we've done. We've sort of helped them get ready to take on those next steps. And for those of you who are familiar with the property, we've got um, you know, as you probably drive by it, you see all that rubble that's there. That's a temp. That's what we call a temporary cover system that was engineered to protect the public um, in the interim before that property gets redeveloped. And now, as we move closer 
to the redevelopment of the property, we have to prepare to replace that temporary cover system with a permanent cover system. And so as a part of getting this additional money, there are some additional steps. And one nice thing about that is that this, using this federal, these federal funds requires that we outreach to the public, which is great because now I can, if I can come on and, and inform you as to what the next steps are on the property. And um, it can sort of inform a conversation and the one thing that you that, that the public should take um, advantage of is that the document, James Bellissimo has the document, and um, I'm going to arrange for James to put the, some of these documents on the website that, that, are, that, are, that are detailing the next steps. And um, as a part of that, we can, um, we can go get, kind of get ready to receive your comments and incorporate any comments that you might have or any questions you might have, we can answer answer them to the public so you can understand sort of what what is about to happen on the property. So, you know, kind of to that end, you know, Great Falls obviously is is going to redevelop the property, and that, and we've had to we've had to take a re a reevaluation of the of the cleanup strategy for the property. And you'll see the two images that, that are shown here. One is, um, is sort of um, a, an aerial photo, you know, photograph of the site. And it shows, you can see all the rubble areas, you know, kind of, I don't know if you can see my, uh, my cursor, but this, is, this area is all the rubble and all the temporary cover system. There's a permanent cover system here in this area. And, um, and there's some asphalt in this area. All this stuff here, is going to be replay, replaced as they redevelop the pro, redevelop the property. Current plans uh, call for the what we call Building A, the largest building on the property, to come down. Building B will come down, and Building C will come down. This L, this is the L-shaped building. It's a little harder to see. This L-shaped building. When you look over here, this is this is Great Falls. This is their um, their redevelopment plan, at least as it stands right now for the property. And you'll see that um, the L-shaped building is proposed to stay on the property. Um, and we're going to address, you know, contamination uh, on that in that beneath that building a little bit differently. But so what, what the remedy is, is um, that we're going to do is we've drafted this new remedial action completion alternatives um, that that defines what will happen next what the best remedy is to clean up the property and we have to go through the process because the federal money is being used and um ultimately what we've done and we've did we have some presumptive remedies and this picture that you see is this i put this on in here so you can see and remember kind of what this property looked like in the middle of tearing down all these buildings I mean, obviously, it, it looked a, it looks a lot better now than it did, than it did then, and in, and for compare now compared to what it's going to look like a few years from now, it's going to look a lot better in a few years, obviously. Um, but we have we have several remedies that 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 are the same remedies, by the way, that we pro originally proposed several years ago, and that is that we're going to take we're going to take these additional three buildings down, and we're going to take them down because there's some there's some sources of volatile organic compounds underneath them that um, we're gonna wanna have removed prior to constructing any new buildings. There's some asbestos on the roofs of the building left it's, um, in the form of flashing. We left it originally in the, in the past phases of work because these buildings were proposed to be rehabbed and we didn't want water infiltration. So but now that the buildings are gonna be demolished, that, that asbestos needs to come out. Um, building C, the whole roof, that small office building, that whole that whole roof is asbestos, and then the two other buildings, um, the L-shaped building, which is staying, and um, and building B, the tiny little sliver building, uh, both have asbestos flashing on them that needs to come out. And then we're also preparing as we move forward to um, do what we call um, install vapor mitigation um, vapor mitigation systems in each of the building because the required um, main DEP is requiring that any new building con considers um, the infiltration of any vapors underneath the building into those buildings. And so we're preemptively going to install um, piping for systems called sub-slab depressurization systems, which will protect the occupants of the new buildings from any vapors that might be underneath the building. We're also gonna remove any VOC sources 
the under the selected alternative. So we're going to go in as we take the buildings down and we're going to assess around the footprint of those buildings prior to doing the redevelopment to understand if there are VOCs there. And if they are there, we're going to remove them. And so that's that's in a nutshell. And by the way, that's the same. Like I said, that's the has anything changed from the last time I was here talking about the remedies? Nothing's really changed. It's just now that they're going for they went for a new loan with um, Southern Main Planning and Development, which is, I think they're borrowing about six hundred thousand uh, dollars for from which will bring the total now for this property to well over two million dollars worth of worth of federal funding that will help the redevelopment and move this project forward. Um, so. So because of the federal funding, they've got, to, they've got to go through this. And we had to reconsider and kind of consolidate. We had two documents for parts of the property. And we needed to consolidate those two documents in one amendment and just talk about that as we move forward. And so it's one concise document. So that, that analysis of Brownfield's cleanup alternatives that I referred to is going to be available, you know, with James. James has that and you can, you, he's the town planner. You can always email James and request that document and he'll make a copy available to you. And we're also going to make a, a copy so you can download it and put it on the website. There's a section on the town's website for documents related to Prime. And we're going to, I'm going to have James put that there. We're receiving comments on the um, analysis of Brownfield's cleanup alternatives all the way through March 26th. So you have plenty of time to get comments to me and plenty of time for me to consider those comments, respond and uh, incorporate any, any, any thoughtful considerations into the documents that we have. My, my contact information is shown here that I'm easy to get in touch with. Um, in fact, if you email me, You'll, you'll get an email back that'll show, that'll include my cell phone. I'm all, I always make my avail, myself available to talk about prime tanning because it's something that's obviously near and dear to my heart. So just to, in case you haven't seen it, this is the, this is the redevelopment plan. And you'll notice um, in the, that this is the L-shaped building for reference. This is Sullivan Street along here, obviously School Street and Wilson Street here. Um, Town Hall is right about here. The L-shaped building is the only building that remains. And under all of these other buildings, we're going to be constructing uh, a permanent cover system. The foundations will be installed and that will serve as, as part of that co permanent cover system. But then within these buildings, we'll go, we'll go uh, PVC piping to serve as the, um, the element for the, um, the sub-slab depressurization system. They're also designing specifically to park, as you can see some parking underneath some of these buildings. That parking will serve two functions. While you can drive under the building and park and it hides some of that parking. The other thing is having parking on the first floor of a building also protects it from vapor intrusion. So if there are VOCs that might come up from the soil, it's going to go into that parking space. And then and because those, those parking areas are usually open to the atmosphere, you know, that 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 any VOCs just naturally um, degas out of there. Um, so you can see these, uh, these are all new buildings and then any green space that you see will have a, um, a cover system underneath it. And any sidewalks will also have a cover system on it. So for the green, the green areas, this is the permanent cover system already. There's already a system here. And basically that consists of what we call a marker layer, which shows the difference between the contaminated soil and the, and the clean soil. And above that marker layer sits eight inches of granular fill and four inches of loam and seed. And so any green space that you see here will have that same treatment. Any asphalt will go directly on top of the contaminated soil. And then what happens is there gets published a map that shows all of these things and where the contaminated soil is. And then that way in the future, when somebody digs, they know if they go below asphalt or they go below cover system, they know that they're going to be running into, into, into contaminated soil. And there's a requirement that that has to be listed in what we call a declaration of environmental covenants that says, if you dig on the property, you have to notify main DEP and let them know what you're going to do so they can make you aware of the potential issues associated with the, with the contaminated soil on the property. So here's, here's just another, um, there's a, again, another, another aerial photograph that shows the rubble and the temporary cover system and the permanent cover system that was installed. And this is also a plan that shows, um, this shows where we're gonna remove the buildings and these little red dots show where, that we're gonna be doing test pitting underneath some of these buildings. 
um, to do um, to do test pits and collect soil samples for VOCs. And we're going to do a field screening to help us inform whether we've got any volatile organic sources that need to be removed. That soil can be taken off before they constructed a new before they construct a new building and hauled off and uh, disposed of at a, at a local landfill like something like Turnkey. Um, and then when it, when it comes to this building, what we'll do is John from um, Great Falls Construction has indicated that he might want to go. There's a so, there's a hotspot source of VOCs that's been identified from previous work kind of in this area of the building. And then also for the for, for building A, there's a hotspot in this area, these two test pits. And um, what we'll do is obviously we're going to have access when we take this building down. But for this building, we may actually go in and cut the floor out and take the contaminated soil out that way. But then also we may do what's called a, um, a vented floor where we'll actually put in um, PVC piping on the existing floor, put gravel around it and build a floor on top of that. And that will allow um, active vapors to be removed between the two. And the reason we do that is that gr the groundwater is really high there. And so we don't want to, uh, we don't want to put any sub slab piping underneath the slab there. We want to have it above that. So it's not in the water table. And that's it. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. That's well, actually, let me, um, let me back up and see if I can back up in case, let me leave this up in case there are any questions from the selectmen or from the public. And that's that in a nutshell, that's kind of that's kind of the presentation. Really, there's nothing new going on, but um, we're sort of moving forward with the old remedy and uh, and hope to be starting soon. The, the um, I know that they've hired the asbestos contractor and they're going to start, I think, as early as Monday on, the, on their work. Thank you, Rick. Um, any questions for Rick from the selectmen? No question. Thank you for the presentation, Rick. Very of informative. Course. Of course. So yeah, Rick, uh, you had mentioned um, getting um, additional money for the uh, cleanup. Is uh, so. Is, could you get us uh, the total number of the grants that we got? You know, I know it's well over two million dollars now. Is um, yep. but is, you know. I'd, li I'd like to have that figure available. You know, people are always asking what they get for their tax dollars and stuff. Is uh, you know, we can show them now that they're actually getting something in Burnt for their tax dollars. So, is um, if there are no other questions or comments, is thank you, Rick. Of course, as formative as always. As uh, we'll move on, is. Unfinished business, I don't believe we have any. Nope. No. No. Um, we have a town manager's report. Um, I sent you all a copy of the MOU that um, we've been requested to uh, participate with uh, all the towns in York County. A, there was a request to uh, have people, if we have some volunteers who would like to help in the vaccination process. Uh, Sanford has the mega center, the old Marshall building. Um, and they are always looking for some help. Uh, they'll get paid. Um, so some of our uh, on-call uh, force and full-time people from the fire department have, uh, would like to participate in that. Uh, so the MOU lays out um, the whole process. Uh, they, um, they'll be under our insurance. Um, uh, and they'll get re we'll get reimbursed for paying them uh, through the uh, COVID-19 uh, bill that should be approved uh, maybe today, tonight. Uh, so uh, everything will be sent off to um, York County EMA, um, Mr. Cleves. And uh, so I'm asking you to approve that uh, tonight so we can move this forward and get the help they need and get the people taken care of. So I just need a motion for approval of the Memorandum of Understanding for the County of New York Emergency Management Agency to provide help, help in, uh, for the uh, COVID-19 uh, mutual aid. So moved. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion second. and a second. Um, is there any discussion? 
Hey, Steve, I have one question about that. That MOU looks like it's pretty generic. I'm surprised we didn't have something like that already in place. Uh, the cover letter said specifically for volunteering for the uh, COVID-19 shots, COVID -19. Yep. but the MOU is very generic in terms of anytime we have an emergency, and I want to make sure that everybody understands that. I, personally, I think we need to have that, and we should have had that long ago. Long ago. For your yep. county. Yeah, I think this whole COVID-19 has brought out some uh, things that have been missing, and, uh, and not just here, but nationwide. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't disagree, and I think it's, it's a good thing to have in place. Uh, we, you know, it's interesting that we have mutual aid for police, we have mutual aid for fire, um, and we didn't have it for an EMA uh, process, but this covers it pretty well. So, um, Any further comments or discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mike? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself as a yes. Five nothing, Patty. I'll need signatures or Patty will f for that. Um, one other thing uh, that came up today, um, we have been working with our legal uh, team on uh, transferring ownership of the Blue Sort building. Uh, they're prepared to do that within the next couple of weeks. Our attorney says, I, I need a motion to authorize the town manager, treasurer, to uh, uh, close and transfer the ownership of the Blue Sort building to the fund of Jupiter. Um, we had a quick claim deed um, set up and it'll probably be at the next meeting, uh, but they said that we need the motion from the Board of Selectmen to move on that, so I'll, I'll entertain that as well. So moved. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? So just to, just to, for the, public to understand a little bit better the the, the metal building at the tannery site the blue sort building is the final piece of the puzzle yep. that uh <clears throat> mark Cahaya has a hold of and we've been trying to turn that back over to him and what this will do is uh you know finalize that project so that we can uh sign off on that and get the money that he owes us for it which so. is approximately one hundred and four thousand dollars in back taxes and and other fees for, for Crediary, um, fencing, and smaller items. So we'll clean that all up and get that off our plate, which is will be. It's been a, quite a process. So, but. With no further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark. Yes. Noah. Yes. Ken. Yes. And myself as a yes. Five zero. Very good. Um, just to keep you abreast, I haven't got your financials uh, for this uh, past month, but I'll get that to you in a couple of weeks. But uh, I did get uh, reports on our uh, revenue sharing and excise tax. Um, it's still continuing to grow. If it stays on the track, we'll exceed what we did last year, which <clears throat> is totally unexpected. Uh, so that, that's good news. Um, also, I heard from Ryan Hale, he is the uh, financial guy that manages the Lena Clark funds, the cemetery one and the one for the building, and he sent an email today that we're going to talk this week that looks like the market's getting better. So this past year, it was, we did not get as much interest as we normally receive, so it's been uh, rather tight. but. And we have been spending it down over the last five or six years, making improvements on this building. So that's that's coming. So um, otherwise, uh, things are status quo. I'm waiting for Wright Pierce to start next month on the uh, well exploration of aquifers for the uh, water department. Um, and we'll see how much long it is before uh, the snow disappears and public work can take their plows off. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's, it's relatively quiet. That's all I have. Does anybody have any questions of Steve? No, if not, I'll move on. Selectman communications, I have 
nothing of importance to report is uh will bring us to our accounts payable we have a payroll warrant number 54 for march 4th 2021 for the amount of seventy thousand six hundred ten dollars and sixty three cents we have a payroll warrant 55 for march 11th 2021 for the amount of sixty nine thousand one hundred seventy seven dollars and nine cents <throat> We have another payroll warrant from March 11th, 2021. This was because there was a mistake on the other one. There's a payroll warrant 57 for the amount of $1,043.40. And we have account payable warrant 56 for March 11th, 2021 for the amount of $845,830.98. I'll make a motion that we pay our bills. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you. Now comes the fun part. <laughs> We're going to go through the warrant articles for the town meeting. Is what I'll do is I'll read down through the articles and then we have to record our vote as whether we approve them or not. Is we will not be doing a roll call vote for each. We don't need a motion. Is I will read the article and just ask all in favor if I can have a simple show of hands. And I uh, will go on from there. Article 1 is to elect a moderator. Article 2 is to elect, a elect by secret ballot two selectmen and one school board member. Those don't need our vote. But then we have Article 3. Shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the land use ordinance? And there will be an Exhibit A attached to it. All those in favor? Five, yes, zero, no. Article four, shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the zoning map? And an exhibit B will be attached. All those in favor? Five, zero. Article five, shall the town vote to adopt the proposed ordinance entitled Burwick Food Sovereignty? And exhibit C will be attached. All those in favor? Five zero, Article 6. Shall the town vote to use up to $2,400,000 from estimated revenues to reduce the amount to be raised by taxation for fiscal year 2021-22, which begins July 1st, 2021. All those in favor? Five zero, Article 7. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $415,400 for the general expense account for the fiscal year 2021-22? All those in favor? 5-0. Article 8. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $400,000 $81,450 for the town administration account for fiscal year 21-22. All those in favor? 5-0. Article 9. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $290,904 for the town clerk account for the fiscal year 21-22. All those in favor? 5-0. <clears throat> Article 10. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $186,601 for the planning account for the fiscal year 2021-22? All those in favor? 5-0. Article 11. Shall the town vote in to raise and appropriate the sum of $117,832 for the assessor's office? For the fiscal year 2021 22. 
All those in favor? Five zero. Article 12. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $165,750 for the town hall account for fiscal year 2021-22? All those in favor? Five zero. <clears throat> Article 13. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate, appropriate the sum of $54,526 as a second loan payment for the purchase of LED lighting as authorized by passage of Article 3 at the November 5, 2019 Supplemental Town Budget. All those in favor? 5-0. Article 14. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,000 for the general assistance account for fiscal year 2021-22? All those in favor? 5-0. Article 15. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $2,060,679 for the police department account for fiscal year 2021-22? All those in favor? 5-0. Article 16. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,119,667 for the fire department account for fiscal year 2021-22. All those in favor? 5-0. Article 17. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,237,522 for the public works account for fiscal year 2021-22. All those in favor? 5-0. Article 18. Shall the town vote to authorize the expenditure of all revenues received from the State of Maine Urban Rural Initiative Program for fiscal year 2021-22 for road improvements as authorized by the program with unspent balances to be carried forward each year. All those in favor? 5-0. Article 19. So the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $591,255,000 for the refuse disposal account for fiscal year 2021-22. All those in favor? 5-0. Article 20. So the town vote to raise and appropriate the, from taxes a sum of $263,677 dollars for the recreation account for fiscal year 2021-22. All those in favor? 5-0. Article 21. So the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $291,702 for the Berwick Public Library account for fiscal year 2021-22. All those in favor? 5-0. Article 22, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $498,646 for debt service to cover the appropriation for fiscal year 2021-22 as authorized by passage of Article 31 and 32 at the annual 2016 annual town meeting and Article 5 at the November 6, 2018 referendum election. <clears throat> All those in favor? 5-0. Article 23. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $21,700 for the community agency appropriations account for fiscal year 2021-22? All those in favor? 5-0. Article 24. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $196,388 for the annual fire protection, fire hydrants, cost for fiscal year 2021-22? All those in favor? 5-0. Article 25. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $600,000 for use of road, bridge, and sidewalk construction and repairs, as well as town parking lots and public ways, 
and includes expenses for curbing, drainage, engineering fees when required, with funds to be used in conjunction, conjunction with State of Maine Urban Rural Initiative Program and with unspent balances to be carried forward each year. All those in favor? 5-0. Article 26. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $23,900 for the Federal Stormwater Program for fiscal year 2021-22 and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances carried forward each year until fully expended? All those in favor? 5-0. Article 27. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of ten thousand dollars the sum of ten thousand dollars for economic development purposes for fiscal year 2021-22 and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended? All those in favor? Five zero. Article twenty-eight. <clears throat> Shall the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a purchase and sale agreement with landowners and to purchase property from landowners for the purpose that allows the expansion of Memorial Field. Funding for the purchase will be used from impact fees that are allowed to be used for these types of community projects. All those in favor? 5-0. Article 29. Shall the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to sell or transfer 10 School Street, map U001, lot 007, a town-owned property, including land and buildings, and including the execution of all agreements and other documentation, to effect such sale or transfer for, as it deems advisable and in the best interest of the town. This article refers to the old fire station only, all funding from the sale will be used to pay down the fire station bond. All those in favor? Five zero. <clears throat> Article 30. Shall the town approve a capital project consisting of various renovations, upgrades, and improvements to the Burrick water plant, including engineering and design costs, transaction costs and other expenses reasonably, reasonably related thereto, appropriate the sum of $1,200,000 to provide for the costs of the project and raise funds from user fees, authorize the treasurer and chairman of the board of selectmen to fund the appropriation through the issuance of general obligation securities of the town, <clears throat> with or without call provisions, with or without premiums, and including temporary notes of, in anticipation of the sale, in an ag aggregate, aggregate principal sum, um, sum amount, boy, not to exceed 1200000 and to delegate the treasurer and the chairman of the board of selectmen the authority and discretion to fix the dates, maturities, interest rates, denominations, calls for redemption, with or without premium, Refunding form and other details of said securities, including authority to ex execute and deliver the securities on behalf of the town. Funding will be raised by user fees. The debt service for this loan will be paid by the water department users only. All those in favor? 5 0. Article 31. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $21,634 for debt service in fiscal year 2021-22 as authorized by passage of Article 37 at the 1997 annual town meeting? All those in favor? 5-0. Article 32. <clears throat> Shall the town vote to accept James Way as a public right-of-way as requested by residents? All those in favor? 
five zero. <coughs> Shall the town vote to accept River Bend as a public right of way as requested by residents? All those in favor? Five zero. Article thirty four. Shall the town vote to authorize the select board and treasurer to accept on behalf of the town any gifts of money or property, including trust funds that may give it, be given or left to the town for the purpose of supporting Berwick Community Television, placing such funds into a non-lapsing account, and to authorize the expenditures of any such funds for the operating expenses of and or capital improvements for Berwick Community Television. All those in favor? Five zero. <clears throat> Article thirty five. Shall so the town vote to authorize the use of interest money from the Lena Clark Trust Fund interest account when there are major repairs or maintenance needs at the town hall? All those in favor? Five zero. Article 36, shall the town vote to charge interest on unpaid taxes at the rate of 6% per annum and to set the date when taxes committed for physical year 2021-22 become due and payable as of October 12, 2021 and April 12, 2022 with said interest to be collected after October 13, 2021 in April 13, 2022, and allow the tax collector to accept prepayment of taxes prior to the tax commitment date. All those in favor? 5-0. And Article 737. Shall the town vote to set an interest rate of 4% as allowed by state law as a rate to be paid to taxpayers who pay amounts in excess of amounts finally assessed and authorize any such interest paid on collectible taxes or abatements granted to be charged against the annual overlay. All those in favor? Five zero. And that is it. Thank you for that one. Whew. All right. So that brings us to New business, quick claim deeds is the next one. We have one quick claim deed. It appears to be for a uh, piece of property that we had a lien on and they paid all the taxes and fees on it. In full. In full. So I need a motion to accept the quick claim deed. For map U005, lot 42. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. I, I, I like those where we able to give the property back to the owners yeah. after we've made arrangements. Yep. Makes it a lot neater. That was a tough one. Got taken care of. All right. Um, we have no abatements or supplements. There is no second public comment that I can see of. Uh, we have no executive session. Does anybody have any... Biz other business and non agenda items you'd like to bring up? I did want to say uh, that I think that our uh, public works has done a great job this season. Uh, it's been a crazy weather season with, when, with wind and ice and snow, and I've heard no significant complaints about them. I've always been able to get to work, and the trees have been cleaned up really well. I just want to give them a shout out and say they've been doing a great job. Great job. Thank you. They are a good group. Yep. They've been hard at work, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh... Just a reminder, too, that next Tuesday at 6 o'clock, we have a meeting with um, 
the planning board, um, and, and Envision Berwick. Yep. Um, it's a thing that we try to do quarterly. Um, it's been kind of difficult with the um, pandemic stuff, covert, but uh, James and I have set that up, so it uh, should be a good discussion. That's all it will be. But Any further comments? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good night, guys. Aye. Right Thanks on time, Patty. 7.15.